have been asking me about, you know, when am I going to be doing live shows, why don't I do live shows, and the whole live touring thing. And um, I'm definitely working on some things that I'll reveal a bit later on. But what people don't understand is that the whole touring and live shows thing is a lot more complex than it actually seems. When it comes to entertainment, people have tons of options these days. I mean, there's video games, there's movies, there's live sporting events, there's weddings, there's all kinds of stuff to do. And then if people go out to a club, let's say, they're more likely to go see like a DJ who's spinning, or they'll go play billiards, or they'll go do karaoke or something like that. They want to sort of have fun themselves. So when people go out to have a good time, basically they're going out to hang out with their friends, to meet new people, to sort of see and be seen. Generally, they're not necessarily going out to see a live band. And if they do go out to see a live band, generally it's going to be a band that they already know about, or it's going to be like a cover band playing songs they're already familiar with. So if you're an independent, original material band, you're going to have to have fans who are going to come out to see your show. You can't count on going to a club and converting the people that are already there. So like a few years ago, you could go out and play clubs, and you could probably convert a few of those people into fans. But nowadays, if you go play a club, you know, you'll play your set, and people come up after and be like, oh, you're really good, you should go on Idol. But, you know, they don't usually walk out there converted into one of your fans. Unfortunately, the days where you used to be able to go and play to 12 people, and then over a couple of years build that to 1,200 people, those days are pretty much gone. So the difficulty that I am uh, encountering and finding is that I have fans scattered all over the world from like tons of countries. Um, so it makes it really difficult for me. Um, if I was perhaps like a local band, say I was from Cleveland, and I had like 1,200 fans in Cleveland, it would be a lot easier for me to book a venue and pack that out in Cleveland. But right now, with everyone being everywhere, it's very difficult to justify routing a tour. If, for example, I was using the services of a booking agent, they would want me to absolutely guarantee certain numbers to make a tour worthwhile because they earn a 10% commission, and 10% of $1,000 is nothing to them. It's just peanuts. When I book a tour myself, there's just a basic minimum cost uh, in order to pay the musicians. If we go out on the road, there's more costs involved, such as travel, you know, lodging, visas, um, accommodation, all that kind of stuff. It costs more money. I can't afford to play for 12 people, like perhaps a rock band can, um, or like a singer-songwriter, because if I do that, I'm going to be losing $750 to $1,500 every night. I just can't strip down my sound to me and a guitar player or me and a keyboard player. It totally misrepresents my sound and really what I'm trying to present as an artist with my music. Um, you know, and then Singing to tracks, I mean, I've done that before, and quite honestly, you know, I'm not going to charge people to come and listen to me singing karaoke. You might as well just listen to the CD. So, what I'm going to do is that um, after the Relationship Odyssey is released, I'm going to promote that album, and I'm going to work really hard at building up the fan base, and then analyzing the data and seeing where there's clusters of people in order to be able to route a tour to make sure that the costs are covered. If you're not on my mailing list, basically you're invisible to me. I don't know that you exist to know to bring my show to where you're at. So if you could do me a favor and just sign up for the mailing list, the link is below um, and also in the bottom bar. Go ahead and sign up for it and then I'll know you exist and I'll be able to see if I can bring my show to your town. Don't you just hate it when this happens? So a few weeks ago I was running out of toothpaste, so I went and bought a new tube of toothpaste, right? Came back home and was brushing my teeth that night and thought, okay, well I probably have a couple more squirts left in the tube. But it's been like two weeks and the tube just keeps on giving. It's so weird, but I guarantee you that had I not gone out and bought a new tube, that would have been the last two squirts out of the tube. That's the weirdest thing ever. That's all for today.